Oh, hi there. <laughs> hey, this is David Austin with davidaustingallery.com. And we're going to paint, and you're going to see some of my techniques that I use today. And if you have questions, shoot them out to us. Be sure to follow us along on our regular TikTok uh, account, I think, right? We yep. can say that. And we have, currently have 80s music, canned music that my wife just started. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> you're I, welcome. I, we're going to need a lot more big hair and more cowbell. Oh, don't even tempt me. I have the big hair covered. I mean, the cowbell may be a stretch, but. <laughs> so if you look around real quick in the room, you'll see a lot of big pieces, particularly over on that other end. And behind Kristen, there's big pieces. I work big most of the time. And at least I try to, but I also work small. So I have hundreds of small pieces, thousands of small pieces, works on paper, canvas and things. So I wanted to talk today about how kind of the process happens from beginning all the way down to the varnishing using the glass, natural glass from Spectrafix. And I've got some work in process. And then we have some little tiny ones down here that we finished just before, just when we moved into the area. Uh, we just moved into Duluth, Minnesota, by the way. We love it here, it's an amazing place. We only have 25 minutes. I'm used to like the one to three minute things that you You have more time, keep going. <laughs> it gives me, now listen to the music in the background. <laughs> Okay, so is a that a theremin I hear? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's hilarious. So I'm kind of referencing a, a painting I have down there that I've really liked and I've not really succeeded in creating, recreating the, the feel of it. And I thought, well, I'll try that a little bit here in the process of talking with everybody. So a lot of times I'll loosen up with some charcoal on a board. And this is just plain... Um, well, they call it locally monkey board. Yes, I don't know why. It's quarter inch luon, basically, but they call it monkey board here. I don't know why Mr. DeSanto calls it that, but he does. He's my local, uh, what do they call it, a dealer for... <laughs> for wood board? Wood. He's my local dealer. So... Okay, that's enough ceremony. That is, that is, I cannot, I cannot walk... <laughs> I can't believe that's a thing. It, it won't leave. Okay. It finally stopped. Finally stopped. Make it stop. <laughs> so I like. Oh, this is worse. It's almost worse. I, what did you get me into? <laughs> this is like most of our TikToks and TikTok lives. This is. <laughs> it was labeled happy, which I guess we're giggling. So. Wow. You know, I'll tell you this much, Kristen. Yeah. Our uh, TikToks never go as planned. Oh my god, I just changed playlists and it's the same one. <laughs> so this is a gesso, and I just sprayed, you saw I sprayed it down with some water. And the reason I sprayed it down with some water is to change the absorbency of the wood in various areas. That gives me a little more variation in uh, how the pigment's going to absorb and how this, uh, uh, also this is the, the gesso, how the gesso will absorb. And we're going to work into this a little bit more using some other different colors, some Amsterdam acrylics. If I can get it open, it's brand new. Oh, again, I should have probably... Uh, brand new Amsterdam acrylics. I'm trying to open it, nothing's happening. So I work a lot with uh, palette knives. Wow, they even got swearing going on this one. Well, we're on TikTok, we're allowed. There's, oh, we, we're allowed on this one? Mm hmm I can't keep track of the platforms. This is why Kristen keeps this stuff up, because she knows I won't do it. No, oh, thanks for the follower. <laughs> so let, let's check, check that out. That is some beautiful color. It's a blue. I hadn't tried this particular one. I don't know. Greenish blue. It's literally called greenish, greenish blue. blue yeah, yeah. Okay. Greenish blue. So I kind of got that laid in, and I want to get a little more gray in this middle area here. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is mix it right in with the, with that. And I'm actually gonna take, put a little bit of black, a touch of black. Right, oh, here it is right in front of me. <laughs> Palette knives. This is, a, this is called studio camouflage, what I'm wearing today. Yes, it is. That's what Kristen calls it. 
So just a titch of the blue, the black here, and then I'm going to mix it right on there and create a little more of a gray look. A little more neutral gray. Is anybody else out there painting today, or is it just us? Only us. It's only ever us. It's only ever us. Sometimes you just got to do some marks on stuff. Make a mark. Make a mark on stuff. Okay, so I'd like to put a little pink in there too, and this one's not open either. <laughs> oh, I love that color. Wait, I got to get in. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. It's all for you, yeah. babe. Normally I'll have, I don't like to waste paint, so normally I have several paintings lined up. Yes. Several surfaces and I'll, any leftover paint, I'll move it right down the line to the, to the next piece. But since in the demos and the teaching that we do, we, we have to alter how, how I do things. And so that's how I'm, that's why it's doing what it is. So we're gonna go and put some pink in here. It's gonna mix a little bit with the blue, but that's okay. I'm going to create a really strong, vibrant color right in the middle of this. And even with the blue mixing in a little bit, creates a little bit of a gradient as well. So now we got this really, really strong, strong pink. I'm going to take some right down there. Oh, yeah. Right in the middle. You like that, Kristen? I do. I do too. Just using the blade of the piece. Let's do a little more definition, create a little more texture in there. I'm going to define this a little bit, doing that same technique. Keeping kind of a gestural quality to the piece overall. Welcome everybody joining us right now. Oh, I really need to put this on another surface. I didn't bring any out here, Kristen. Uh, After the live, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> put it on something. Come here, I'll put it on. I actually was thinking about painting these pants today, like a lot. Oh, were you? Yeah. Got tie dye jeans on. They, I think they need to be painted on. So, this, yes. Yeah. I think so. That sounds like Black Jessel, Amsterdam. And where did that piece go that I had? Right here. So now I'm going to take and do a little bit of black. Welcome, right Lloyd. Welcome, Aaron. Welcome, Arthur. We're painting today nice. in the studio in Duluth, Minnesota. Acrylic mixed media. You don't ordinarily do it on a Friday afternoon, but we were feeling like we could, so we did. Yeah, it's usually my nap time. It really is. But we all went to bed early last night, so. Gosh, the kiddo got up so early today. Yeah. Yeah. So I work in layers. This is really one of the first layers is what I'm doing now. And it's a lot of wet into wet. And then I'll go back and I'll work the piece some more, a little bit later, and, and start to define it using the markers, pencils, um, different kinds of other paints, water media paints even, I'll use. I'm going to pull some of that color right over through there. A little overlap. Same down here. I've got a question here, and I yeah. answered it, but you can answer it verbally. Do you always work in a way that's always so close to compositionally balanced? Oh God, no. That's what I said. <laughs> no. It's um, unbalanced. Yes. We, no. I'm un unbalanced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, normally it's very unbalanced. I was just trying to look around at some of the things. Um, there's, there's an element of balance, but I, I try to make things a little more like 10% or 20%. So if anybody knows what I mean, I like try to get like your attention pulled to a specific 10% of the corner, you know, and so it might be a really bright color. For This is a good example of it here on this little tiny one. Okay, here's a little, little, can they even see that? So here's a little piece, you know, it's pretty continuous discontinuity of the surface there. Uh, you got the oranges, but it's balanced out to use the term there. The gold is kind of balanced out, but you've got this hot pink right there. 
It's the only place on the whole structure that you've got the hot ink. So I'm drawing attention to that specific spot, okay? Um, some of the bigger ones too that we don't have out right now is because I didn't think to put them out. Um, I do the same thing. Uh, and it drives her crazy because it makes it harder to do to do what you do, which is yeah. the, <laughs> the apparel designs and things. Because she wants to see things that are more rig or more contained structural or no pattern. I, it's, it, when I turn it into a piece of apparel or a piece of fabric, it's easier for me if it's more balanced. But that being said, the results of the unbalanced create things like that hoodie. So. Welcome everybody just joining us. We are painting in the studio in Duluth, Minnesota today. Mixed media acrylics. Mixed media mayhem. Uh, those of, uh, of you who are following us will recognize that painting right there behind David. It's in the last couple of recent TikToks. We had a really good day today, didn't we? We had a great day today. What happened today? What happened today? Well, you know, we have a gallery in Southampton. It's called ARDT, which is great. And we've sent, they have 12 pieces. Yeah. Five, like 12 that. five by five pieces that they're exclusively representing. They're on first dibs, which is really cool and amazing. And, and that eventually will pay off very nicely for us. It's a fairly new series and so forth. But we went to visit the local gallery that we just what, three weeks back? Three weeks ago, three we're, weeks we're ago, signed with. Uh, signed up with them in, in Duluth. And it's Lizard's Art Gallery and Framing in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're in Duluth, check them out. They're a phenomenal, great framer. They framed a bunch of my work and then they said, hey, would you like to show? And I'm like, sure, why not? So we did. And then um, we went in just to see uh, what it would look like or what it looked like when they hung them. And there weren't very many hung because- They keep selling. They sold. <laughs> <laughs> so they've sold six pieces of various sizes already up to, I think, the 36 by 36, yep. right? So that is super excited, exciting. Um, we've been doing this a very long time. Well, I have. But, you know, two years, very consistent effort with Kristen's involvement, right? Yeah, about two years for me. And it's been a, it's been a hard slog. And I've been doing this. I'm a little older. I'm... <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> So I've been at this for, well, I guess well over 30 years, I guess, huh? Yeah. So for me, it's been a long slog, but it's been more recently that we've been working together, Kristen and I, and it really makes a difference. So it's a fun piece. This is a good place to start. And we've already probably gone 15, 20 minutes, right? I don't know. Anybody have any questions? We're so, gonna sign off here pretty soon. Oh. So we're gonna move down to finishing. So one of the things I finished, here's a piece in process. This is actually our son, our four year old, and I worked on this. Uh, he started out by making a robot, but the paint was incredibly thick. So I didn't, again, use some of my techniques. This on was that. actually not a robot, this was Bigfoot. This was Bigfoot. So hopefully he will, he's more process oriented, so it works well because, you know, I'm not really wasting materials. And he sometimes gives me a really good start. Other times the piece that he does is really good and we save it. We have quite a few of these, yes. right? Now, But I used this, so it had really wet, a lot of paint. So I, I used the, just a tile, tile masonry tool. And I made If you are there. ever stuck, go to your hardware store, yeah. find a new tool, spend $5 and come home to your studio. So this is just a marker. So one of the techniques that I'll use is a marker and I'll just go back in and highlight the areas that I want, add, to, add additional structure. If I need to clean up structure, I'll use the markers to help with that. And these are acrylic markers, but you can do the same sort of thing in watercolor too. So you can see that just makes that pop, right? So for example, we got this from Echo Line. These are brush pens. These are. These are really cool. It's a uh, watercolor base, so you can do this the same in watercolor. These are really fun to work with too. We'll do something on that later. Right? right. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then uh, you can come back in and use more marker. 
Or you can use pencil. I got a lot of different pencils. Hey, markers. we've got a lot of extra, not extra, new people here right now. Anybody want to see the studio? So, you know, you can come in and highlight things with just simple pencil. And that helps create a little more depth and structure within your piece. And so you go in, and this is one of the things that I do. So you get really, really detailed when you come into it. I like to look at a piece of artwork and have it discover, you know, be a, a, an act of discovery. So I'm exploring the piece. I want to hold the attention of the people. So sometimes that means a little more detail or things that you can look into. Oh, wow, what's going on over here? Oh, well, look, you put little black lines. What's that mean? Oh, it could be windows. It could be something, a person. It could be a structure. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. So just adding some little details in there. It could be brush pens are amazing to play with. And then I've got the bigger ones. What do I do with the bigger ones? There we go, back here. So, and you can even go further. My wife's going to be like... That was already done. What are you doing to I it? I was going to hang it in my office, but now you've taken over. <laughs> now I have to put it on the website. So this is a biggie, biggie, <laughs> Posterman biggie. These are great because they're really big. There's no other brand that I found that has the, this the wide. giant the, nib. This wide nib. Unless you get your custom ones from um, Malato. And these are nice. So what I do with the Malato, I buy the blanks here. Look how much bigger that is. I buy the blanks and then I put in the acrylic inks on that. So again, it sounds like an Amsterdam thing, but again, Amsterdam acrylic inks, and these are really amazing. And we're going to do a lot more with those coming up soon too. So I like these because I can get a big broad stroke in very quickly. And I can change kind of the dynamics of the piece, leading you in a direction that maybe you weren't expecting. Uh oh Oh no! Don't shake it without your cap on. <laughs> Nib <laughs> on the loose. <laughs> and come right across here with it. Now this first layer is actually um, tempera paint. So it's not, this is not actually sealed. If you don't want things to tr travel up through, it's, it's intriguing because this is the tempera paint, it's water soluble. So when I do the acrylic markers over it or any other kind of surface on it, it draws the pigment from the previous layer up through it and makes some really, really neat effects too. And you can kind of start to see that here as it's drying. And the gray one particularly that I mixed specifically here, this also does some really fascinating pulls, pulls color. So this is a here. custom gray you made this out of is, some inks. Yes, custom gray. Get it a little bit, a little bit wet there. Let's just go right through here. And as this dries, it's going to create... Yeah, you can all see the layers underneath right now. You kind of got to give it some time as you're pulling it. Don't rush it. And now that's going to draw all of those pigments up through it as it dries. And you're going to see a lot of that. This is a good example of that one here. This piece is 18 by 24. Look at the... So you can see the drawings up through there. Can they see that through there? A little bit. You can see the previous layer. So the acrylic inks are somewhat translucent because they're so thin. So previous layers will, will come through. Yeah. It's kind of like working with glass. I love mixed media. I love it because there's so many options. You can do so many things with so much. I get into doing these lives with you guys and and I'm like, my mind is blown. I don't even know where to start. I want to use this. I want to show you this. I want to show you this one. Oh, I want to go to the game. So <laughs> and, and I get to lost in that. And so my suggestion for you that if you're a mixed media, decide on two or three things and, and, and combine them together. Work with that for a little while so you kind of get the hang of it. And then switch to something else and try that. Uh, you'll find your own style if you're just getting going. And if you've been a professional artist for a long time, even you, go do something different and wacky. Get yourself out there. Um, and, and, and push that brain, that mind body. We get into habits and it's hard to get out of them. So that's my creative tip for the day. That is not what I intended to do today. But anyway, we have a lot of work available online, davidaustingallery.com. It's through the TikTok shop. TikTok, TikTok. Just go to our link tree on the, the profile. There you go. Did you go to the tree yet? <laughs>
Of course. Nice. It was on my to-do list this week. And you're going to have a lot of fun playing. And if nothing else, if you're an artist, I hope you'll follow along. If you're a collector, definitely follow along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Anything else, Kristen? No, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you probably tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow's live on Instagram and TikTok. And YouTube. Approximately, and YouTube, approximately 11 a.m. Saturday. That's Central, Central. Time. Central Time. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Take care.